Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube and beyond, however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. As always, I'm Ryu, he's age. We're back for another anime night in the dojo discussion of ReZero season two, episode 18. We just uh, rolled out of the reaction and did a couple, uh, you know, fact checks really quick here. Um, that's why we're starting on this lovely frame right here because uh, age had a post-it note this week. It's not you. You had nothing to do with this post-it note. So what do you have to say to that? Okay, then just pout. Fantastic. So, uh, Age, you, you had some stuff you wanted to check into when we checked into it, so. Yeah, I kept bringing it up in the previous episodes that it was, I was racking my brain for was that I could have swore we saw this hallway here in the previous episodes and we went back and we confirmed it. And yeah, there is in fact a hallway that's almost identical to this in the manor, meaning there is most likely some form of either seal or trial or something which related in the manner itself that we haven't got a chance to see yet because as we went back and rewatched the scene Subaru goes down the hallway but he doesn't get to enter the final door before he dies right so and we that, never actually see where that hallway leads right and that was uh for reference that was in season one uh episode 15 yeah, um, like right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, um, where Subaru comes back and finds uh, the manor just like toasted, and then he walks past uh, Rem's body. Or no, this was behind. It was like classic Scooby Doo, right? It was behind a bookshelf. It yeah. was. He goes into the room. He finds dead Ram holding Petra, and he's looking for Amelia, and he notices a book place, a bookshelf out of place. He goes into the room and it's really cold and there's tons of frozen cultists and he walks through the hallway gets to the door and just as he gets to the door puck freezes him to death because amelia's already dead right because he was too damn late but it was this kind of hallway not the same was... color scheme but this style and this thing so clearly there's something going on with that and it's... Well, even the colors were almost exactly the same the only thing was it was a little bit darker but that kind of comes with frost with, right that that kind of comes with both it was freezing and because of the framing where we were actually in the hallway here we're looking from the outside but there's a lot of lights on the outside right brightening the whole image up so yeah so there's something going on at the manor that we uh, we did confirm, and uh, I'm sure at some point um, we'll get back to that on the, you know, the the joking road trip I keep mentioning to uh, free all the uh, the other witches from their uh, from their uh, seals, and uh, you know, th there's probably gonna be something with that. It might not be a road trip, but you know, <laughs> it's something, and there's one in the manor, so. It's it's tr truly up in the air which uh, one that could be at this point. So uh, that being said, uh, we did confirm I would, that. I would say that it was greed, but we already have greed right here. So right, we have to figure out what other one it's associated with, which actually does kind of lead into one of my other points I was going to make. I was going to bring up the whole my theories that had been confirmed as well as a few of them that haven't been confirmed but that i'm free to talk about at this point because we've gone through enough of the story the confirmed theories were uh that roswell is tied to the witch's cult that he has a great that he has his own uh, gospel uh granted i didn't know that it was like the original gospel but i did know that he had one and had that confirmed already uh and uh what was the other thing um of course now i'm drawing blanks uh uh was it something to do with the seals or pandora or something no it was a that he was responsible for the attack on bram and rem's village right because I always thought that that was the timing was too convenient for the fact that oh the witch's cult has attacked the village but Roswell's conveniently there to save the two of them and take them under his wing right um 
the unconfirmed thing about Roswell that still hasn't been resolved yet and I have avoided getting confirmation on is which could be still a thing but is less likely at the moment with the stuff that's been happening in this season relating to him and that was I was since I already had confirmed speculated and then had confirmed that he was related to the witches cult my theory was that he was the Archbishop of Wrath Which, the reason why, one of the things that was bringing that, bringing that up is, if I am right about that, then that could be the seal that we have in the manor, is the manor could be the, it could be the uh, seal of wrath. Right. So if he's tied to any witch, then it, it would make sense that he's just kind of living on one. <laughs> and or owns we the know, land around it. We know he has ties to Echidna. But we already have an Archbishop of Greed that is not him. So it's possible he has ties to multiple witches because we've already seen at this point in examples with, I mean, just Greed himself this episode that uh, the same Archbishops do interact with other witches outside of their own witch. Right. And as we also saw in this episode, um, even though Rom kind of says, oh, that, uh, that's a Master Roswell from generations past. That doesn't necessarily mean it's still not the same guy. <laughs> yeah, either he does age, just ages extremely slowly, or he's body hopping. Body hopping probably oh. being the most likely. And at that point, either Rom knows his secret at this point, because he does, he is closer to her than anybody else so she would know probably at this point what he is doing to stay alive longer or she just used that as like a term of like oh yeah that was just him from a long time ago <laughs> during this whole conversation with Shima um, having the uh, the memories of the original Ryuzu so yeah I mean it stands to reason that all of the clones have the memories of the original she's just the only one who's actually gotten a chance to see them right because she took the trial and she got to see that past with Beatrice and Echidna and stuff like that in this village here so and we did get that brief cameo of Roswell in this episode which you know he's probably going to be relevant in some way shape or form when we get the second half of that story right which uh, we still don't we still don't know what his connection to Echidna is we just know that he has a past connection to Echidna from before she died right and uh quickly well not quickly just going back to what we were saying at the end of the reaction with how how the pacing of the show is a lot different than the majority of other anime right now that we have that we have personally watched um this ep the these last like eight or nine episodes i believe not this whole season this whole season wasn't like this but at least the last eight or nine episodes have all been like 29 minutes plus like bordering on a full full half hour like a full 30 minutes yeah, ever since the last, like, episode or two of the first core. So, that is, um, causing the show to have drastically different pacing than, like, as I mentioned in the reaction, the other show that we're currently reviewing and reacting and discussing weekly is My Hero Academia. And what just, you know, they're com two completely different shows, obviously. One's an isekai, one's a, uh, a shonen, but... I'm just talking about pacing of the show and how much of the show is actually in the like half hour time slot, um, which begs the question, how the hell do they get away? This, that would lead me to believe that when ReZero airs, they either cut some stuff out for TV or it's like a 45 minute segment. You know what I mean? Because otherwise they wouldn't be able to get any commercials in and we all know how uh, cable companies and TV providers and all that stuff, wherever you're watching it, likes their ads. So, yeah. Uh, they've done extended episode lengths in the past. I mean, the first episode of season one was double length. Right. That was what, like 48 minutes or something like that? It was like almost 50. If I recall. It was almost 50, if not exactly 50, from what I recall. Right. 
So that being said, um, comparing that to like just say the run of the mill average, just like this, something like My Hero Academia or you know any other show that just runs the normal, you know, twenty two and a half to twenty three and a half minutes, this has an extra six minutes tacked on, and this show does not have an intro and an outro. So as we were talking about before, so those twenty two to twenty three and a half minutes of say MHA. You cut off like a minute or so, like a minute and 20, minute and between like a minute and 20 and a minute and 45, whatever the intro ED is, and then the outro, which is another like 45 seconds to a minute and a half. So then you have a basically about a 19 minute episode, you know, worth of content that isn't just the, uh, the opening and uh, closing scenes. And also certain shows like MHA also take like 25 to 35 seconds for a preview, which we don't watch, but still that's still part of the time slot of the the full 23 and a half minutes about so with re-zero you're basically getting an extra episode every three or so episodes because it's like about 30 percent longer so three not episodes mention, of re-zero is like four episodes of another anime at the not moment to in general like the story stuff is significantly denser in this than most other shows right when they don't like prolong random scenes we're not going to talk about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we've discussed that uh, the prolonging one uh, enough and the no you stuff enough. But anyway, um, that being said, the, the pacing, the way this is going, this isn't really we could we could look at ReZero as an outlier in the way that, yes, it's 25 episodes, but time wise, it's going to be like. 32 to 33 episodes worth of you know normal time slotting so uh they must really want to pack some stuff in here because there have been episodes re-zero that were the usual like you know usual time of 22 to 23 minutes but recently uh it's been the full half hour basically which uh that would lead me to believe that there is a lot going on till the end of this season and that's just they're using that to that time to their to the fullest extent yeah so as age mentioned earlier um in just if you cut out this whole part with just uh shima telling the backstory with beatrice and echidna and all this stuff with the flashback with roswell and it the stuff that she saw when she failed to take the trial um if you just cut that out and just have the rest of the episode with amelia and pandora and all that stuff just that section with Amelia would have been enough time passed for just one full episode. But the and way that would have been a fairly dense episode by a lot of other shows' standards. Right, and that would have been exactly just fairly dense by itself. But we got the extra bacon bit sprinkles of, oh hey, this is still a thing. We didn't forget about Beatrice. We're gonna we're gonna just, you know, they're they already established that while Amelia's in there taking the trial, these this group is out here just kinda hanging out and waiting and she needs to yeah. tell the story before whatever may happen to the denizens of this sanctuary when the trial is completed yeah because i mean they already gave the rest estimation of about an hour for the trial so would they have to give them something to be doing in the meantime mm -hmm. so uh knowing that and how they're proceeding with the pacing uh i i get the feeling that while amelia is in there in the trial We'll probably get something to this effect until Shima's done telling her story and they're done with their little, um, like, five to six minute, like, side part of the episode. And then it'll jump into the Amelia stuff or vice versa. It'll start with Amelia stuff next episode with Pandora. And then, like, near the end, like, maybe Shima will finish her story or something. Yeah, because while it seems like the Amelia story is nearing the conclusion with the whole pandora thing we're still missing a decent chunk of it like why the whole village gets frozen or the fact that you know like i said amelia is older when she is frozen right but she Unless still has to take another trial after she completes this one though to well, yeah, completely but finish trial it. In the past is the right. thing so that's where we're most likely going to get it but mm -hmm. it could still be technically part of the present i guess right um but yeah, like, so that is the thing. Either she 
for whatever reason, was still aging in the ice. Which usually that kind of thing doesn't work like that. Or we still have some sort of time skip in her past between when she's a kid and when she is older and where she gets frozen. Right. So, as we were jokingly mentioning during the reaction, uh, this this part of the episode was definitely the, uh, the I suppose portion because the I supposing was reaching critical mass. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose. I know. That was that was crazy. So we got a little insight into, you know, when the kidna lived in the village and what was going on with Beatrice, um, whether she's what she said being, No, I am your daughter, Lady Echidna. But, you know, that could just be like an adoption thing, like Age mentioned, or um if she's like some sort of like proto like uh created spirit, not like a naturally forming spirit, that kind of thing. It could be one of Echidna's experiments. Yeah, like I said, that's my most... There's still plenty of ways they could go, but that is my most likely, like, theory slash idea, is that she's some form of experimental, like, artificial spirit that Echidna created, and therefore she's her quote-unquote daughter. Right. Because Echidna basically said, or straight up says, you know, oh, you're not my daughter, but, you know, she may as well be. She says... She says something like a daughter to yeah, me. something like a daughter and, and then uh, beatrice chimes in of like no i am your daughter mm. so you, you got to take each uh each person's uh you know what they say with the uh, obviously beatrice sees her as a mother but the kid not obviously is stating the obvious and the fact that well not really though <laughs> So that's fine. Um, let's see, probably mostly why uh, Beatrice likes to hang out in the library, other than the fact that she was tasked with that. But uh, this this also kind of uh, got me thinking about the uh, the whole thing with uh, how she, in uh, the Sakai Quartet show, uh, how she immediately kind of like strikes up a friendship with uh, one of the elves from uh, Overlord. Mare. Yeah, with Mare. So... That, that this that in isekai quartet may be like a like a reference to this friendship that she had with ryuzu yeah which isekai quartet has shown on numerous occasions that it draws more from the mangas rather than from the actual shows and brings in shit from uh further along i mean it was like once again that's freaking frame back there like even the door is very similar to the one in the manor right it's like literally the same door so there, there's clearly something going on with that Be besides subaru's terrible you know handwriting all over the place <laughs> <laughs> oh man several cat drawings too are those supposed to be puck yep uh, i have no words <laughs> oh man but yeah, th that was, uh, this is about when, uh, we dive into the Amelia stuff, and yeah, that was, yeah, as we can see down here in the corner, 22 minutes remaining left in the episode, and since this episode doesn't do previews, or, or th this show doesn't do previews or anything like that, um, this is like a full episode, so this was like, okay, we're gonna open with this for like seven minutes, and then go into this, so, yeah, it's like a full episode in like a half, even, of content for ReZero going on right now with each uh, each story that they're just like trying to really cram in here for whatever reason. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I think it's fine the way they're doing it. So uh, I'm sure they have their reasons and we can look into that after the season's over, I suppose. Since this is the I suppose day, I'm going to just keep saying it because I hate myself and the audience, I suppose. Anyway. It's definitely an interesting vocal quirk, I suppose. Yep. But yeah, moving right along, we got to see a new character, a new witch. Whether she is actually the Witch of Vanity is up for debate. Um, she could just be in league with the Witch of Vanity or, or herself. Yeah, once again, once again, the wording could go either way. It's either she's the Witch of Vanity or 
she's working with the Witch of Vanity. Either and way, dropped to the Witch of Vanity. We got another um, with Fortuna being a Roman uh, goddess reference. Now we have Pandora, uh, so they're kind of uh, going into the uh, you know ancient mythos here with these names. So let's uh, see yeah. if we get any more of that in the future. Um, any more Roman, any more Roman god stuff? Any more Greek god stuff? Um, it'll be interesting to see. But she is, in fact, uh, her name, whether she's the Witch of Vanity or herself or not. She is Pandora, and her power is impressive. <laughs> yeah, we don't know if that's her only powers, but she's reality level, so she's a major threat. Right. And we, uh, in this episode, we got to see uh, how uh, Goose uh, decided to take in the Witch Factor, which... Apparently you can just, you know, carry around in a box. <laughs> it was some sort of like sealed box of some sort that he had uh, on him. Because he, it seems like at this point in the past, there was an established, it wasn't like necessarily the witch's cult. There was an actual established like witch church that right. they're talking about. They did and, distinctly use the word church, not cult. Yeah. The only thing is, though, they didn't specifically state, oh, no, it is the witch's church, so it could technically be a different church and not the witch's cult. But the way they're talking about it pretty heavily implies that it is the same thing. It's just at this point it was referred to as a church and hadn't turned into a cult yet. Right. Uh, and that, yeah, uh, Metal Geist was not it's an archbishop yet but he was still an archbishop within the witch's church mm -hmm. which uh circling back around to the spirit stuff um greed here does refer to uh Beogeis as a spirit yeah so which we already see in that even since this is confirmed now at this point before he becomes a Sin Archbishop that he didn't age prior to being a Sin Archbishop. Mm -hmm. So that does leave credence, leave credence to the idea that he has been a spirit this whole time. Right, so we now have like uh, at least two confirmed like humanoid spirits whether, you know, Beatrice is an actual spirit or like an artificial creation of uh, Echidna one would assume that, you know, spirits take on any and all forms in this world between the lesser spirits with the, just the little floaty, uh, the little floaty glowy like uh, firefly things to spirits like Puck. Um, and then to... That's the thing. We haven't really seen very many greater spirits at this point. It's, most, it's just been like the lesser spirits, which look more like wisps. Then we have Beatrice, Puck, and now battle guys are mm -hmm. the only like three major spirits that we know of right because the rest of the uh animalistic creatures in this are either humanoid or they're mob beast so yeah it's either they're they're either the magical beasts uh, mob beasts or they're demi humans which are just humans with uh animalistic features and slash or monstrous features right so there's definitely a, a bunch of lore that needs to be dropped here in the future but i'm sure they'll get to that because they're they're doing a very solid job at uh you know cramming a bunch of stuff I'm, I'm, i don't want to use the word cramming because that makes it sound bad just you know dropping all the uh stuff that needs to be said for the show which is good um and i'm yeah, like i'm fine with this pacing it it just like i mentioned before it's just a little weird like reviewing and reacting to an episode that is you can distinctly feel it because you know you, you watch something like this and you talk about it for a while and then like either later tonight or tomorrow when we record my hero academia like i've mentioned the last couple of weeks it's just like you know when the ed pops up for mha i'm just like wait it's over already what the hell <laughs> Like Deku's just like mid rant and then it cuts to the end thing. I'm like, wait a minute. Don't we have like five minutes left at least? What's going on here? <laughs> like, no, 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 this is over. <laughs> yeah, compared to 
this show's extended runtime and overall density, MHA, like, no. Nah. Like, even freaking Ruby's shortened runtime with the sheer level of density in that, MHA still has a hard time comparing. Right, like that super dense episode we had we had several super dense episodes of ruby this season that we discussed i was just like we came out of that and that was like a 19 and a half or like a 21 minute episode the one where a uh, penny fight cinder and i was sitting there i was just like that was like two hours right <laughs> <laughs> that was some serious pacing and even this like w we know going in we can see it you know uh just the runtime on the player it says 29 minutes 29 seconds but even then, it like I look down and it feels like more than half an hour based on the pacing. It's just like, oh, do I have to? It's like, just finish lunch. Uh, do I have to go make dinner now? Because that was that was a long time, wasn't it? No, just just thirty minutes, huh? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, it, it's definitely an interesting change of pace. So uh, anyone out there, just just try it. Watch this. You know, if you're a ReZero fan, I, I assume you're watching this because you're a ReZero fan and you. You like hearing us talk about it in in general so just you know go watch a different show like right after re-zero and just be like what, what do you mean it's over it'll probably happen to you too it's 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 a little weird it's kind of a weird experience so yeah, <laughs> yeah especially this section of re-zero that's you, you you wouldn't think that it's like oh it's just six minutes that's nothing just 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 watch and then just watch some watch this and then watch something else and that's, you know, in a half hour time slot and just be like, well, you, you'll notice six minutes is definitely noticeable. <laughs> it is definitely serious business. 360 seconds. You, you start, just count 360. You know, one, two, three. It's it's a long ass freaking time <laughs> when you break it down like that. So it just I really wanted to, to just discuss that pacing a little bit there because it's it's definitely interesting and it's, it's an interesting change of pace and I, I do like it even if it does kind of like skew my perspective of the other shows that we're watching that are only like, you know, only, you know, like a standard episode length. It's like, wait, we have to go to the next one already? Or, you know, we're, we're done for the week in, in certain cases? But it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. But uh, moving on with the, uh, the rest of this episode here, you know, sealed box, that was interesting. We got to uh, maybe in the future here, in the next episode or so, we'll see... Uh, what, uh, what we already know what the long-term ramifications of anyone uh you know housing which factor and using it are so it, this is just you know when uh Beto guys uses it for the first time and we can see that even back then uh Perneus was a badass so <laughs> what, yeah, whatever his cool. power is is it well Beto guys is like unseen hand is is really powerful and stuff the two opposite of him um not not the greatest matchup for him <laughs> they both have methods of just nullifying his attack because pandora rewrites reality to negate things and then it seems like corneas's power is essentially uh manipulation of kinetic energy so he can basically just you attack him and he can just say nope that doesn't have kinetic energy anymore so therefore it doesn't do anything to him right and even if it's something that he can't see with his eyes as we saw as the fight progressed uh he was able to basically anticipate what uh beto guys was doing so he was just blocking parrying everything as opposed to just getting grabbed and tossed um initially because you know he didn't see the power firsthand but it's obvious that he's very adaptable and once he's seen something and knows what it is in this case an unseen hand uh he can just deal with it because it does still have kinetic energy you just can't see it so uh that aside two very powerful characters we knew uh he was very powerful to begin with because we saw him at the beginning of the season and uh pandora is reality level so we'll see uh probably more of her obviously in the next coming episodes as we saw at the end here with uh amelia showing up at the seal of uh, the big creepy uh black sealed door and uh she was already there so yeah <laughs> we're uh we'll definitely be seeing more of that um since echidna did 
like just you know ghosts of christmas passed them away from what was going on with fortuna and geis um i doubt we'll see what happens uh the resolution of this uh fight fight or discussion that they had with uh pandora so it's it's just up right. in the air um obviously uh if you know, we, we know we've seen Fortuna frozen, so she has to survive, survive that encounter. And obviously the big B survives because he's around when Subaru is around. So he's just different. And yeah, yes, death. Yes, he has to survive long enough for Subaru to kill him. Right. <laughs> so uh, obviously both of them are survived that somehow. Um, maybe she just rewrites it and just, you know, pieces out and shows up where Amelia is. And that's uh, that's more or less what I assume is, is she's just basically going to sit there continue she's going to continue monologuing at them and then once she's feels like she's said her piece she's just basically going to rewrite them back into the village and herself at the seal right but uh, I guess the other thing we can talk about really quick here is uh, Archie we've discussed our theories on whether Puck could be, you know, Archie, could be Fortuna, could be anybody, but those two are yeah. probably the likeliest candidates because we don't know how exactly spirits are naturally formed and say whatever happens to Archie with this mob beast, he could, his spirit could come back in spirit form as Puck. So... Yeah, so we don't know about whether or not, like, people can become spirits. The only things we really know is that spirits are beings made entirely of mana. And that one of the methods for greater spirits to become a thing is if a lesser spirit becomes strong enough, it can form its own personality and become a greater spirit. Right. But apart from that, we don't know anything really about greater spirits and how they can possibly be created or turn a turn from like a like a person into a spirit. Right. But we did get to see the last of Gluttony's mob beasts, the uh, the great serpent that has a, uh, well, it has a very uh, interesting, I mean, it's a serpent, so it's poison. Um, and as Age mentioned in the reaction there, uh, it's probably soul-based. So as we see, uh, Archie does sever the bottom half of his leg there and, uh, you know, has enough time and plot to tell Amelia to run. And after she leaves he gets completely engulfed by the poison which we don't know what it does other than we know it's bad enough for him to sever a limb for it so it is yeah. also worth noting the walls referred to as a serpent it more or less just seems to be a mass of tentacles and uh he didn't get bit or anything he literally just got cut by like one of the sharp ends of the tentacles right we saw no discernible like actual head or bite or anything right so it could very well just literally coming in contact with the serpent itself is poisonous. Yeah, it just kind of looks like a, a grayish blob in this slot, in this shot here. Blackish blob, just like a writhing mass of, you know, could be a typical like slime that just kind of like attacks like a serpent in a way. So maybe that's just why it was uh, referred to as that by Gluttony. Because that was a very serpent s strike that it uh, made on Archie there, so. But maybe it's just kind of like a, a misdirection other than actuality. We might see its actual full body at some point here in the next couple episodes, but. The, yeah, the titles of the different gluttony mobbies themselves are inherently misdirecting. I mean, the white whale had numerous things about it that very much don't denote it just being a white whale and also the great rabbit is actually a collection of rabbits it's not a singular rabbit right so yeah we uh i think we pretty much covered everything we had to here um i got, the... I got nothing else personally I, I wanted to talk about the pacing um you know maybe in the future we'll see more uh roman slash uh, Greek mythos uh, just named characters because that seems to be like what they're kind of establishing here. They introduced Fortuna uh, the Roman goddess of fortune and then Pandora we all know who Pandora is from Greek mythology um, yeah. 
Pandora is the big question mark right now. Is she vanity or not? Uh, what is her actual affiliation to the other witches? Like, we know she's at least big within the witches' church. Enough so that she can order archbishops around. But at the same time, she's also... At the same time, granted he was angry, Greed still was willing to turn and attack her. Right. Which, as we saw, she was turned into a fine red mist, and, uh, you know, she's back, stuck him in the ground, and rewrote him to be with his... Back at the manor with his wives. Okay. <laughs> he was never here. He was never here. He was... He, he was just doing harem things, so... May, maybe that's why he's so mad. He's away from his harem. <laughs> I mean, he's greed. You think he wouldn't have a harem? Right. I mean, you know, just like uh, the greed from, like, Full Metal Alchemist. You know, the thing he said, he wants it all. You know, money, women, you know, all, all of it. So, <laughs> you would assume that a Sin Archbishop of Greed would have a harem. Just, just saying. And if he didn't yet, he'd be trying to get one. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, going into next week, uh, you know, maybe we'll see the conclusion of that encounter with uh, Pandora. Um, because obviously Amelia was there when they ran away and knows that Pandora is a threat. So she'll probably question her or something like, well, what are you doing here? Where's uh, Mother Fortuna and uh, Guy, uh, Goose and something like that? So, yeah. Like I said, I keep bringing up that like Fortuna is really the wild card in this whole story because we really don't have anything specific to peg her to. Like, she could be Vanity, or she could not be. The fact that Vanity was even mentioned means we've been bringing original sins in and not just the seven deadly sins. Plus, then there's also the whole idea of there's not even, just not being sin-related witches in the first place with like Amelia claiming the title of the Frost Witch plus whoever the hell Amelia's mother is it's either at this point it's either Pandora is the Witch of Vanity or based on her namesake and her powers and stuff like that she's the Witch of Chaos and she's unaffiliated with the Sin similar to Amelia and potentially her mother. Right. So we'll, we'll just have to see. Being a sin witch throws up, up, up even more question marks at the witch's cult working with her. Mm hmm. Maybe like a brief grudging relationship kind of thing. <laughs> An alliance of convenience, not, uh, not just, uh, well, I, I want to be allied with this person kind of thing. Yeah. Another thing with the whole idea of the original sin which is coming in with like vanity and stuff like that is uh, what is their relation with Satella? We know Satella killed and stole the powers of the original like seven deadly sin witches but we don't know anything about these new witches with between the non-sin related witches and uh, the original sin witches like vanity right so there's definitely a, a lot of uh potential for world building in general going on right now um while we're getting amelia's backstory and everything they're definitely uh, laying the ground for a lot of stuff in the future so the the series could very well last uh, quite some time in the anime so it'll be interesting to see i think we got there um i've got nothing else personally uh, you got anything else for us, Age, or are you, uh, you good? Nah, not that I can really think of at the moment. Alrighty then. Um, but yeah, we got the, we did that fact check earlier with the whole, uh, mansion having the similar thing as the, uh, as Echidna's, uh, trial ground, so that, that'll probably be a thing in the future, so... Put that on the uh, put that on the list of there of things to remember for the future, because 
yeah, it's there in the manor, so that's a thing. So let's uh, put that up on the wall. Um, if if it's a sin witch, my money is currently on wrath, but we'll have to see. Right. Which I'm just in the boat of. It's definitely a witch. I I, I really don't know who Roswell could potentially be affiliated with personally, though. Uh, he does seem to be kind of uh, similar to the Witch of Wrath in certain ways, so we'll we'll see. But uh, we'll leave it at that for the week. So, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube and beyond, however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for another anime night in the dojo. This time featuring the discussion of ReZero Season 2, Episode 18. We're moving right along. Pacing's real, and I like it. Um... Yeah, so we'll be back next week with another reaction and a discussion video as usual. So, you know, like, follow, subscribe. It really helps us out, and we appreciate any and all support you give us. So, yeah, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you as you watch. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.